Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to be looking at the sysctl command and its associated configuration files. Having a good understanding of this will allow you to manage parameters in your PROC file system. So the first thing to understand is the PROC FS itself. The PROC file system is a virtual file system and is normally mounted under slash PROC on most Linux distributions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that with the mount command. So if we look at PROC using the mount command, we can see that it's PROC and it's mounted on slash PROC with type PROC and the mount options are read write, no suid, no dev, no exec and real time. So let's go ahead and take a look inside of slash PROC. So when we look inside it, we can see our PIDs, our process IDs, as well as several other directories and files. And the way that this works is that the files are key value pairs. So the name of the file is the key and the contents of the file are the values. So for example, if we take a look at the proc CPU info file, we can see inside of it all the information about my processor. Now the file or the directory that we're interested in today is the uh, slash proc slash sys. And if we look inside of this, we see several other directories. We see uh, dev, sf, kernel, net user. And what these refer to is dev would be your devices, fs would be um, file system, kernel would be options that directly affect the kernel, net is a network, vm would be your memory. So let's drill down and take a look at just one of them. And the one that we're interested in today is the net IPv4 ICMP echo ignore all. And we're going to look at this one because of the effects of it are very obvious. So I'll start off by showing you we can ping the local host 127.0.0.1 and it returns. So let's go ahead and read the contents of that. So we're going to count out the contents of proc sys net ipv4 and then icmp echo ignore all and we can see that the contents of it are zero which means that it's not turned on so we can turn this on by echoing into the file but we can't echo into it directly so what we need to do is echo into sudo so we're going to echo one and then we're going to uh, sudo t and then the file that we want to t into so proc sys net ipv4 and cmp echo ignore all enter our sudo password and now when we cat that again we can see that the value is one and if we try to ping our local host again, you'll see that it doesn't reply. Now, another way that we can read the value of this parameter is using the ctl command. So let's clear this out. And what we're going to use is the sysctl. And we'll start off with dash a and pipe it into less because it's going to be a lot of output. And it'll show us all of the current um, kernel parameters. So if we take a look at this. You can see all of our kernel parameters, so we'll clear out of that. But if we want to look at one individually, instead of grepping through it, we can use ctl and then ar, which will allow us to use a regular expression. Oops. And we will take a look at ICMP here. And that'll show us everything that has ICMP included in it. And if we take a look at the top one, we can see the net IPv4, ICMP, echo ignore all, and it's set to one. Now we can also change this parameter using the sysctl command. So instead of having to echo into it, we can use the dash W option and write. So let's go ahead and clear this. And we will use sudo sysctl dash w for write. And then we need um, the name of the kernel parameter that we're going to write into. So it's going to be net.ipv4.icmp echo ignore all. 
and we're going to have an equal and then zero. And what this is, this value is relative to the proxys file. And instead of forward slashes, we're using periods. So once we write that in, we can use the sysctl command again with a r and take a look at icmp. So we'll take a look at icmp, ICMP underscore ignore all, and we can see that it's set to zero. And now these are key value pairs. So if you are wanting to get only the value of a key, we can also use the in option. So just how it is before, we'll add the in option, and this will return just the value. Now that we've changed it back to zero, we should be able to ping the local host again. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And we can ping it. Changing kernel parameters this way is not persistent, and it won't survive a reboot. So if we want these changes to be persistent, we need to add those changes into the appropriate file in the sysctl.d directory. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and do that. So we're going to change directory into etsy sysctl.d, and we can take a look at the files that are located in here. Now you can see that they all end with .conf except for the readme, and they start with a number. Now the way that this works is it's going to parse every file that's in this directory that ends with .conf, and it's going to begin with the lowest number to the highest number. So anything that you have in 99 is going to overwrite anything that's in 1 if you're editing the same kernel parameter. So for example, if we had the... Uh, ICMP echo ignore all set to one in uh, 10 dash custom.conf, and then we had it set to zero in 99.sysctl, then the 99.sysctl would take precedence over it. If you've watched tutorials in the past on how to make these settings permanent by editing your sysctl.conf file, um, that's actually the incorrect way to do it. And in fact, if we do a long list of this, and we do l slash l here, you can see that this 99 sysctl.conf is actually a symlink that points to the sysctl.conf file. This file doesn't actually get parsed. It's every file that's in the sysctl.d directory that gets parsed. And this is a symlink to it. And it's also not a good habit because whenever you make changes like this, you want to make a separate file that describes the changes you're making. For example, this one we have Brave, um, we have Zero Page, Kernel Hardening, etc. So if we wanted to make a change to the ICMP Echo Ignore All um, kernel parameter, we would want to make a separate file that reflects that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to sudo vim, and we will call it 10-test.conf. Uh, and in here, we will add the net. We will add the net.ipv4.icmp underscore echo underscore ignore underscore all and then space equals one to turn it on. And then we're going to right click out of it. Now, before you do this, it's a good idea to make sure that the value that you're changing doesn't already exist in another um, file. So an easy way to do that is using the grep command. So if we wanted to check if the reverse path filtering kernel parameter was already set in one of these files, we can search for it. Um, using an expression like this. And then if we take a look, if there is anything in there, it should show up. And you can see that it is defined, but it's commented out, which is fine. Now that we have the new value defined in a file in the sysctl.d directory, we can activate it immediately using the dash p option with sysctl. So if we use sudo sysctl-p, um, by default, it will read just the sysctl.conf file, 
um, or we can specify a directory or a file um, specifically. So we can do etsy sysctl.v, and we can either do a star, so it'll reread everything, or we can just do the one file that we set. So let's go ahead and do that. So it'll read it in and set it to one. So let's go ahead and test to make sure that that's active. So we'll use sysctl ar and then we will go icmp. And we can see this top one, it is now set back to one. So if we ping our local host, we can see that in fact it has been set. Now every time we reboot the system, those changes will stay intact. And that is the proper way to use the sysctl command and edit its configuration files to manage your proc file system. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe.